So what are some of the things that come to mind when you think of the big, awesome, amazing technological advances in the field of prosthetics? Maybe 3D printing, microprocessor knees, bionic hands, running blades. All those things are cool and awesome, but they come close to worthless if you have an ill-fitting pocket. So in that list of innovative tech when it comes to prosthetics that people might not always think of are liners. So liners made it possible for many more amputees to get access to a prosthesis and have success with a prosthesis. So basically, what a liner is, it is the interface between the residual limb and the socket. It provides comfort, it helps protect the skin. Most liners have materials in them that are healthy for the skin. And oftentimes it is also part of the suspension system, how the prosthesis stays on the residual limb. And as irritating as these can be, they do a great job of improving comfort and reducing friction, especially compared to what we had previously up to, you know, 1940s, 1950s. Before you just had these wooden sockets or sometimes even metal sockets that were just sock fits. You know, you didn't have liners at that time, sockets that were a plug fit. So basically they were left open at the bottom and that caused a lot of problems. The main one being verrucous hyperplasia. That lack of distal contact would cause this discoloration, edema, kind of this warty-like texture that could sometimes lead to infection. Thankfully, with the introduction of liners and also changes in socket style, uh, you don't really see that anymore. And I have still seen it. It still comes up if there's a socket that is poor fitting, that doesn't have total contact on the bottom. So liners really have done so much, especially when it comes to skin health, skin integrity, comfort to the residual limb. So it really opened up the doors for prosthetics to be more accessible to more people. Now we have so many different liners. I have a couple different kinds here. This one, they come in all sorts of different thicknesses, different densities, different types of materials, different levels of stretch. Some have more stretch, some have less stretch. Some are thinner, some are thicker. Some are thicker in the front and less thick in the back. And you have different types as well for different suspension types. Different companies now each have their own version of each of these different types. So we're gonna dive in and over the course of the next couple weeks answer some of the main questions I get when it comes to liners. So we'll be discussing different types of liners, different thicknesses of liners, different liner materials, common issues with liners like sweat management, contact dermatitis, and also things like how do I put on my liner? How do I take off my liner? How do I care for my liner? How do I know when I need a new liner? You know, we'll talk about custom liners. So if you have any questions about prosthetic liners, let me know and we'll try and get those answered for you. All right, thank you.